What have been your overarching thoughts through the first couple of rounds of the NCAA tournament? Well, I want to first give a shout out to ESPN. I was watching your guys' coverage uh, and look at how many brackets you guys had. You had last time I counted, you had like 11 million brackets. So it just tells me how much people really missed March Madness last year. That's the first thing. Secondly, in a one and done scenario, anything can happen. That's the beauty of this tournament. You know, like in the NBA, the best team always going to win a four out of seven game. But in March Madness, one game. The best team does not always win. That being said, Greeny, mm -hmm. man, it's going to be tough to beat the Zags. They are terrific. You know, after looking at tape the last couple months, I thought that the Zags and Baylor were the two best teams. I have seen nothing to change my mind. Uh, Michigan is terrific. Alabama is terrific. But listen, I'd be totally shocked if it wasn't the Zags and Baylor in the finals. And Gonzaga, again, looking to be the first team since Bob Knight's Indiana team in 76 to go unbeaten the whole year and win the championship. Charles Barkley with me. So, so to your point about the, for lack of a better word, randomness of the tournament, which I fully agree with, I'm interested to hear your perspective on this. I went to school in the Big Ten. I love the Big Ten. The Big Ten has gotten annihilated in this tournament. They had nine teams in. Eight of them are already out. Some will look at it and say, that means that the conference was overrated. So if someone says that to you, Charles, what do you say? I don't think it was overrated. Um, listen, it's, it's a one-and-done scenario. Anything can happen. I mean, nobody picked North Texas to win. Uh, you know, nobody thought Loyola Chicago was going to win two games. You know, they got a terrific coach. Coach Moser is a terrific coach. Mm -hmm. But I don't – listen, you throw all the regular season stuff out the window, one and done is really one and done. You just – like, listen, if Illinois played Loyola best of seven, they'd win that series. But they played – my man Crutwig, mm -hmm. if you don't like <laughs> watching him play basketball, you don't know anything about basketball. <laughs> uh, they're very well coached. And you, you knew after the first 10 minutes that game was over because the way they play, you're not going to come back on them. you got to get off to a good start because they're not going to help you. They're not going to make any mistakes. The great Charles Barkley with me here on the Goodyear Hotline celebrating March deal days with month-long service and savings. Visit GoodyearAutoService.com for offers. And if you're wondering, have there been more upsets this year than usual? The answer is there have been more upsets than ever the lar it is the, right now the average seed is a 5.9. That's what you, the math is. It's like a six seed is still alive, which is the highest that number has ever been since they went to this format. So, Charles, there have been more upsets this year than any year before. Is, is that in any way based upon – do you think that the, the, the circumstances here, the pandemic and everything else, do you think that's part of the reason for that? No, not really. Hey, listen, yeah. you're talking about all those upsets. There's only been one number one seed that's gotten beat. All the big mm -hmm. boys are still there. Yeah. I think that those schools, listen, the uh, Oral Roberts, they've had the two best players on the court in both of their games. That's not an upset. If you have the two best players, uh, just because people don't know who you are, that's not, you know, you, you, we use the word upset. Oral Roberts, Max Amos, and, uh, and I forget the big guy's name right off the top of my head, they've had the two best players in the both games they played. You know the the one thing that's um, the, the one thing that's weird. People don't realize how many terrific, great basketball players there are because the only time we ever see these guys is for March Madness or their college uh, or their their regular season ending tournament. But listen, those two brothers in Eastern Washington, mm -hmm. their boys were flat out balling. My man who had the Bill Walton look, he was <laughs> out there smashing people. But Green, I think the problem is. We only show the big-time schools throughout the year, and we don't realize – nobody knows Max Amos is leading the country in scoring until right. March Madness starts. So I, I think that's the biggest problem, just perception, because we don't see these smaller schools play. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.